tell people I'm a triathlete, I get one of two responses. The first is the nice, generic, wow, or being impressed, which I love. The second and the more knowledgeable one is, which discipline are you best at? Which I hate, because I am terrible at all of them. <laughs> Laura, my sister who trained with me for my first triathlon, tells me that when you watch me swimming, that it is incredibly elegant, but it also looks like someone is swimming in slow motion. <laughs> Which is hilarious because under the water I'm like <sighs> <sighs> My fitness app on my telephone tells me that 10 to 12 miles is a leisurely bike ride um, 10 to 12 miles would be a miracle for me. Like I'm going up the hills. It's like three miles an hour I'm like almost falling off my bike because I'm going so slowly. It's about to fall over and I'm Oh, I can't, I can do this, I can do this. And then as I'm going down the hills, I'm like, gonna die, gonna die, oh, Tobe's gonna die. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the running, I don't even run. I walk. This whole area of my body is pretty much a mass of scar tissue, so I just, I don't do that thing. When I was training for Nations, I was training with a team of 10, and every Saturday we would go out and train, and every Saturday I would be dead last. Like not even, I can see this person in the distance. No, just really dead last. And then we got to Nations, and I finished seven minutes before they closed the course. Close the course. That means they go out and they drive out and they pick up everyone who's not done and bring them back because it's just not gonna happen. But, I finished. <laughs> so, I wanted to talk today about why, if you've ever, ever thought to yourself, hey, I want to challenge myself physically, or doing something crazy sounds like a great idea, why endurance sports is probably for you and how you should go about getting involved. If you are a normal person who's not going to become that person who runs a mile in like 3.5 seconds. My first pointer is kind of a downer, so that's why I put it first, because then we can bring you back up. Um, endurance sports, you really don't want to know how many people die during them every year. <laughs> I'm not saying it's like cancer or heart disease. I mean, it's not that rampant or anything, but the difference is it's 99% avoidable. The thing about endurance sports people is that we get into this mindset, and I've been guilty of it too, where we're like, pain is weakness leaving the body, <laughs> and if I just ignore my pain, I'm stronger. Well. No, actually, there's a reason why those people who have that very rare genetic disease where they can't feel pain always die really young. And the reason for that <laughs> is because pain is our body's way of telling us that something is very wrong. Now, don't get me wrong, of course, there's like the normal kinds of pain where you're like, I'm running, I'm running, oh God, this sucks. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, getting through that pain is, is, is strong as being, is a sign of being strong, I guess. Uh, then there's the pain where you're like, oh, I might be bleeding internally. That's when you should stop. And that's when you should have someone that you can call on your cell phone and be like, I need you to come right now and take me to the hospital. And have that person not be like, you're a failure. Because you're going to be telling yourself you're a failure already. Like, it doesn't matter that you're probably dying. You're going to be like, I didn't, I didn't manage this. I didn't do it. Uh, so that's my second tip, is have yourself a team. The team can be anything. It can be your family sitting at home waiting for that call. What I really recommend, I mean, I'm biased, okay? I train with um, Team in Training, which is part of Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I love them because the team is full of people who are, like, they might be really experienced. They might have done a million endurance events, but they're all really supportive. They're all mostly there for a cause, they're there to challenge themselves, which is really what I think endurance sports is about. It's not about competing against the next person. It's not about worrying what time you come in about. And that's what the people on the team are there for. And what's more, they've been there that first time. 
they know how it feels. And they've fallen in love and they want you to fall in love. So they're gonna be really supportive. They're also gonna teach you really important things like how to eat on the course so that you don't pass out from lack of calories and how to take an ice bath after so that you're not limping around for the next week and how to create a training regimen, which is really important because the training regimen is the hardest part. It's not the actual event. The actual event's crazy, but it's, and you're, you're there. You, you've got so much adrenaline pumping through your body, you could probably, I don't know, run like 80 miles and you'd be fine. The training regimen's a little different because you gotta go through it every single week. You gotta do it. You gotta be like, okay, I can do this. I can do it. Uh, which is why my last tip is important. My last tip is there are a ton of different kinds of endurance events. Chad, one of our members, has talked about the Toughest Mudder, which he does, which is like an obstacle course. Um, there's 5Ks, which are endurance events. There's bike rides. There are all kinds of endurance events. Find one that says, I'm gonna love this and pick that one because you're in it for the long haul. And when you cross that finish line, it doesn't matter that you get there seven minutes before the end and there's like nobody there because everybody's already left and they've run out of medals because they got half the boxes of wrong medals so you have to be sent your medal. Yeah, that happened. It doesn't matter because you're gonna get there and you're gonna be like, I didn't know I could do this and I did it and this is my moment. Thank <laughs> you.